Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy and I'm a full-time reseller on the Poshmark app. Uh, I do dabble on other online platforms as well. As you'll see, I have a few uh, sales from Cherish. I have a really exciting video for you today. It was a really great weekend for me. I sold some hard goods, some clothing, high dollar items, low dollar items, all sorts of stuff. So you wanna be sure to watch all the way to the end because I always have interesting and unique items and hopefully you can learn some new things to keep your eyes out for when you're out thrifting. So let's get started. The first item that sold is pretty interesting. It is a semi-vintage Juicy Couture a bag charm or keychain. As you can see, it has all sorts of rhinestones and crystals. It's this puffy heart. Uh, the little key comes out of the lock. I just thought this was a really cool piece. This sold for $99 with discounted shipping. This actually was on a purse that I bought in an estate sale. I have already sold the purse and I believe it sold for over $100 as well. It was uh, made out of rabbit fur. It was really beautiful, but I really felt like I could get more if I sold them separately. The purse sold somewhat quickly. This has been listed for a long time. Uh, maybe almost two years, uh, but because I had already re recouped my investment by selling that purse, and this is such a small item, I really was not concerned at all with waiting for the right buyer to come along. I have had pretty great luck with this semi-vintage uh, Juicy Couture stuff recently. It has really become trendy. So if you see any of the uh, vintage track suits or the kind of velour Juicy Couture bags, I would definitely recommend you pick them up because uh, they are selling for good money. Okay, so like I said, this sold for $99 with discounted shipping. My cost of goods was zero because I had already absorbed it uh, by selling that purse. And oh my gosh, I so wish that I had had my YouTube channel uh, when I went to this sale that I got this Juicy Couture, well, it wasn't even a sale, this Juicy Couture bag at. Um, so my dad had recently sold a property and the real estate agent called me and said that she was selling a property and there was tons of stuff and they were inviting, you know, limited people in and these people were crazy shoppers with expensive stuff and I got so much good stuff. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, after posh fees and my cost of get goods, my profit was $77.18 on that piece. I think that is amazing. And for those of you who are new here, it wouldn't be one of my ship with me videos without belt, belt sales. You will see that I love selling belts. So the next item that sold is this leather and woven cord express belt. This one also took quite a while to sell. I'm not sure why. Uh, it was way down at the bottom of my listings. I sent out offers on about half my closet yesterday for 30, 20 to 30% off, lots of items at 30% off. And so that's where some of these sales are coming from. So this sold for $27 with discounted shipping. I had paid $3 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $16.58. I say it over and over again. I absolutely love selling belts. They are a bread and butter item for me. And I usually make in the 15 to $30 range for profits on those. I would highly recommend that you check out belts if you haven't already. This is kind of an interesting sale. This is really a really cool belt. Um, I think Gino DeLuca. I was really excited when I picked this up because this is a great brand and it was marked made in Italy. But then when I got home and went to list it, I don't know if you can see, but the little prong there is broken. And 
it was just such a cool piece that I decided to go ahead and list it anyways. It took a long time to sell, but it ended up selling for $13. So I don't know if this buyer is going to try and repair it or just use the leather portion. I think this also had discounted shipping. I paid $4, uh, but after posh fees and my cost of goods, that still left me with a profit of $7.07. So, I just hate to see nice quality items go to the landfill if I think that someone can put them to some sort of use. So I am happy uh, that that found a home. I haven't mentioned this before, um, but when I am selling um, faulty items or items that are as is, I do uh, use like the drawing tool on my iPhone to draw a circle around any of the flaws, a yellow circle in the pictures because I want to make sure that it is very clear uh, what the flaw is. And I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm trying to be very, you know, upfront. So I don't want buyers to, you know, say that they didn't see the flaw in the pictures. So another kind of interesting sale, I was at the bins and I picked up this Chick-fil-A shirt. I don't really know why, you know, sometimes when you're at the bins, you just are kind of like, oh, it's cheap, I'll get it. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, so I picked it up. It took a little while to sell and it sold in a bundle with this cute little dainty vintage beaded necklace and the bundle sold for $35. I had paid less than a dollar for the t-shirt and uh, two dollars for the necklace. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $25. I think that's just fine. I did notice that this shirt is quite linty, so I am going to give that a little lint roll before I package it up. Okay, now on to, I had a couple of sales on Cherish, and Cherish.com is a website that I sell hard goods and furniture on. They do charge 22%. Uh, if you have less than 10 items listed, they charge 40%. So you want to make sure that you are ready to list a bunch of items on there if you want to sell. I have linked the seller's guide in the description box below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. It just tells you everything you could possibly want to know about selling on Cherish. And the platform is a little bit different than other platforms, so I really recommend that you read through that before you start listing. Okay, so now on to the sales. The first item that sold is this vintage fireplace screen. Isn't that gorgeous? This is brass and metal. It was not listed for very long and it ended up selling for $300 plus a $25 packaging fee. That's another thing on Cherish. Uh, you can charge a $25 packaging fee, which is in addition, or you can charge any amount of packaging fee, which is in addition to the shipping fee that the buyer pays. So it sold for $300 plus a $25 packaging fee. I had paid $15 for this at an estate sale. So after their fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $244. I'm very excited about that. This will be kind of a hassle to ship, but I think with that profit uh, margin that it is totally worth it. So the next item that sold, sorry, I didn't have enough room on my desk to have all these is this gorgeous pair or gorgeous set. It was a set of eight of these uh, Italian gold rimmed glasses. They have a little Greek key design. And these sold for $200 plus a $15 packaging fee. So $215. These were listed for a little while, probably four to six months. But on Cherish, I am really targeting a wealthy buyer uh, and or an interior designer. And so I do tend to price my items at the high end of comps or above comps, and I just wait for the right buyer to come along. I understand that not everyone has that luxury, but I do have a building for storage. And uh, so most of the time I don't have any 
problems waiting for the right buyer to come along. Okay, so they sold for a total of 215. I paid $12 for the set of eight of these at the Goodwill. So that made my profit $159, another really great sale. Had these been listed on eBay, I don't think I would be able to get anywhere near that amount. Maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I just like the, the vibe on Cherish. And so I typically list most of my uh, hard goods and home decor on there. I'm gonna move these out of the way. So I do have more sales from Poshmark, some more really exciting items. So the next item that sold is this pair of Fry riding boots. These are this beautiful high quality brown leather. These ended up selling for $60. And I'm gonna package those up off camera cause I always kind of fight with those knee high boots when I'm trying to package them. I paid $12 for these at the Goodwill. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $36. How do you guys do with Fry? I ask you this every time. They always end up selling for me for a decent amount, but typically it takes a while for Fry shoes or boots to sell for me. Okay, so the next items that sold were in a bundle. And the first item is this Patricia Nash handbag. I, again, sometimes I'm kind of an impulse buyer and I did pay up for this. They had it list or they had it for sale, the Goodwill for $49, but it made it to the half off color. So I ended up paying $25 for it. I can't remember if I had a 10% off coupon or not. Um, yeah, I don't usually like paying up for Patricia Nash because even though it does have a high retail value, usually it takes a while to sell for me. This, however, uh, sold within less than a month. So that was pretty decent. I am glad that I picked this up this item and the other item which is a leather jacket i will show you in just a minute the bundle sold for 150 dollars so i did take a pretty or the buyer did get a pretty deep discount on this bundle but i was motivated to sell that patricia nash bag because like i said i had paid up and usually they don't sell for very much and this coat I had had forever. It is this super cool motorcycle jacket with fringe. It's very heavy. And the brand is Kerr, K-E-R-R, Leathers. So I think I had this listed for almost two years. I had had some really great luck selling these biker jackets with fringe. And then I paid up for a couple of them. I paid uh, $27 for this. And then it seemed like the trend or whatever kind of became untrendy all of a sudden. And I just had a really hard time uh, moving these out. So when this buyer added both of these to the bundle and offered me the $150, or did I offer her that? I can't really remember. Again, I'm gonna package that up off camera. Uh, I just decided to go ahead and take it and move them out. Okay, so it sold for $150. I paid $52 for both those items. So I really paid up. Uh, so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $68. I am thrilled to move that jacket out and get my high investment back on that Patricia Nash bag. So I'm kind of mixed up with my bags here. Oh, so for those of you who have been watching me for a while, uh, you know that I do pretty well with Carhartt and vintage Carhartt coats. And I was really surprised earlier this year when I found a worn out, distressed, destroyed Carhartt coat and it sold very quickly. Well, I found another one. It is this gray one. Up here, it really doesn't look very worn out, but as you can see on the sleeves, they are destroyed. There is some marks, there is more fraying around the bottom of the jacket. This was listed two or three days. 
I listed it for $119. The buyer offered me $80. I counter offered $95 and they accepted. Can you believe that? Many of you weren't really surprised when I said that I had sold the last one. I think the last one I sold for $80 but it was, it was even worse and it had a personalized, it said Eddie and some plumbing company. The zipper didn't work. It had more stains and it still sold for $80. So keep your eyes out for these at the bins or yard sales or whatever, because there is certainly money to be made on these Carhartt coats and on, you know, distressed and worn items in general. A lot of people are into that look and you can still, you know, make money. Most of the time I try not to intentionally buy flawed items unless it's an item like this. Uh, but if I find a flaw after I purchase it, I will still list the item to uh, try and get my investment back and still make a little bit of money. Okay, so that sold for 95. Uh, I paid about $2 for it. I got it at a fill the, bell, fill the bag type sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $74. You cannot beat that for a worn out item. So the next item that sold is this Montbell puffer coat. If you're not familiar with this brand, I would make yourself familiar. It is a expensive brand. It has a great resale value. This ended up selling for $80. I would have uh, expected to get a little bit more for it, but it did have this mark on the back and it just had some general wear. But if you find one of these and you touch it, you'll just be able to tell that it is really nice quality. And this was the 800 down fill. I picked this up recently at the Goodwill. I paid $12 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $52. This didn't take very long at all to sell, I would say maybe a week to two weeks, which has been my experience with these Montbell puffers. If you look at sold listings for Montbell or listings in general, you will see that there are not very many for sale and there are a lot of solds. So it has a really great sell through rate. People, you know, will seek it out and they really want it. So these sales were from Friday afternoon and now it is Monday. What time is it? Maybe like one o'clock. So from the last two or three days, but I am thrilled. It's really a great weekend for me. Uh, so don't go anywhere. Uh, there will be at least one more clip after this to uh, share what else I sell. I go day to day in these videos and uh, share the different items that I am selling. So uh, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Hey there, it's Wednesday and I've got a few more things to ship out. It's been very slow on Poshmark. I only had one sale in the last 48 hours, but I did have two decent sales on Cherish, so I am happy about that. Let's get started. So the item that sold on Poshmark was this pair of black leather heels with this kind of chunky buckle. These are by Corso Como. I think that's how you say it. Now, I don't typically pick these up, this brand up for resale, although I do know that it has a pretty decent retail price. I actually originally picked these up thinking that I might um, wear them because I've been looking for kind of a good pair of plain, you know, black pumps or plainish, you know, uh, but I never ended up reaching for these. So I decided to list them. I listed them for $49 and they sold for full price. Now they were listed for quite a while. I don't know for sure, but maybe, maybe four months. So maybe 
I mean, I guess not a terrible, crazy long time, but it did take a little while to sell for that price. And the interesting thing is, is that I have been going through and sending out offers on everything in my posh closet, uh, mostly 30% off offers, but some only 20. And I had sent out offers on this item for 30% off and someone else came in and bought them for that full price. That does tend to happen for some reason when I go through and I send out offers on my entire closet. And I'm not talking about using Posher VA to send out uh, bulk offers, although I do use that function too. Um, I do find that somehow it works better when you go through piece by piece and send out those, you know, your max percentage off offers. I like to do that about every 90 days. And then if there's an item that is just stale or whatnot, then I will relist re the items and some of those items will sell as a result of that. So, <coughs> excuse me. So those sold for $49, I paid $6. Uh, so that made my profit $33 and 20 cents. I'm happy with that and I'm happy to see those go. The next two items sold on Cherish. The first item is this adorable pair of vintage owl salt and pepper shakers. These are by Ot Otagari, I think that's how you say it. And um, it is a collectible brand, but doesn't necessarily always sell for high prices. These sold surprisingly for $47. I'm thrilled with that. I had them listed for $44 plus the $3 packaging fee, and the buyer bought them outright. I had paid $4 for them, so after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $33.20. Not a huge, you know, home run sale, but a nice little sale, and I'm really excited that those sold for $47. So the next sale is a really great sale. It is this heavy... I think that this is bronze, but I'm not sure. It's either heavy solid brass, actually maybe it is solid brass, but this is a designer piece. It is a trinket box and it is by Ben Siebel, Seibel, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Uh, the last name is spelled S-E-I-B-E-L. And um, if you have a minute, I would, take time to look up this designer uh, because his bookends, I, I've sold his bookends, I've sold an ashtray of his, and they can command really high prices. So this box sold for $195. I think I sold a pair of the bookends for over 200 maybe 250 And people don't necessarily know, you know, the Goodwill's not going to know what this is. And his designs are pretty distinct. So it sold for $195. I paid $5. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $148.20. I'm thrilled that I had some really great higher dollar sales because it's actually Thanksgiving week. And I kind of have a feeling, uh, so tomorrow is Thanksgiving. I kind of have a feeling that uh, maybe slower this weekend because people will be spending time with family and shopping big box stores, uh, but we'll see. Sometimes I'm surprised. I hope you guys all had a really great Thanksgiving. I apologize that my videos are so, they're published so far after I film them, but uh, because I have other obligations, on a, potentially unexpected obligations like my dad. I like to have one or two videos uh, filmed in advance so that if something comes up, I don't have to worry about missing an upload because uh, with YouTube, it's kind of like, uh, you know, selling on Poshmark or eBay. If you don't stay consistent with your uploads, it can really affect your views and uh, how much money you can potentially make, which I'm not making a ton, uh, but I don't want to make any less than I already am. So don't go anywhere though, because there should be at least one more clip after this. I'm either going to ship on Friday or Saturday, depending on how many sales I have. So I will see you soon. Hey there, it's Saturday and I have quite a few things to get shipped out. This week turned out to be amazing. 
Uh, the first item that sold is this teeny tiny vintage uh, maple leaf charm. As I've mentioned before, I like to buy uh, vintage charm bracelets at estate sales and thrift stores, and then I uh, remove all of the charms and sell them individually, separate from the bracelet. Uh, typically, I am able to get in the $10 to $30 range per charm, depending on the rareness of the charm. This charm only sold for $10 with discounted shipping. So it was not one of my best sales, but I had had it for quite some time. And uh, like I said, I've been sending out aggressive offers on items that are stale inventory, basically. So I sent this buyer an off. Oh no, actually it sold for $10 with full price shipping. I had sent this buyer an, an offer for $12 with discounted shipping and she missed my offer. So I said that she could just offer me $10 with full price shipping and it would come out to be about the same as the 12. I'm distracted. I don't know if I'm, <laughs> if I just said that right. Anyways, sold for $10. I paid a dollar for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $6.05. Nothing too exciting, but I am happy to move it out and a decent return on a $1 investment. So uh, I forgot to mention, I think I mentioned that I was going to turn off my promoted listings on Poshmark. I did that about two to three weeks ago and I have not noticed a significant dip in my sales. In fact, I think my sales have increased since then. So, um, you know, that could definitely be the time of year, but uh, right now during the busier time, I don't think there is any reason for me to be paying for promoted listings on Poshmark. Okay, this is a pretty exciting sale. It is this beautiful handmade leather tote with hair on hide, uh, you know, detail here, really beautiful, thick, high quality leather. This did not have any sort of brand name or anything. You could definitely tell that it was a handmade piece. It probably was sold in a boutique for a pretty decent amount. I ended up selling it for $79. That was a full price sale. Sometimes I do really well like this uh, with these unbranded you know, typed items, and sometimes I don't do so well on them. So I always try and keep my buy-in cost reasonable. I paid $6 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $57.20. This also sold somewhat quickly. I think I have only had it listed about a month. So that is not too bad at all, especially for that type of, you know, return. I'm very happy with that return on that item. Most of my other sales this week aren't quite uh, as exciting because I was sending out uh, those 30%, 20 and 30% off offers, uh, people accepted those and got some great deals, but I also moved some stale inventory out like these Cork Ease boots. I do not know why these didn't sell. They were almost brand new, they're beautiful, but I think I've had these listed over a year, maybe close to two years. These ended up selling for $34 with discounted shipping. Maybe I had them priced too high, maybe Cork Ease aren't selling as well as they used to. I don't know, I love this brand of boot. I have a pair myself and uh, they're great quality and they've been very durable too. Anyways, I am happy to see these go just because they were so stale. So like I said, they sold for 34. I only paid $6 for them, which I think is pretty reasonable. So that made my profit $19.18.
this buyer got a great deal. I moved out some stale inventory. We are all happy. These stickers that I got from uh, Timu, which I don't think I'll be ordering more items from them. I have found out that they are kind of a sketchy site and uh, they sell your information. And I recently placed an order, well not recently, um, maybe about a month ago, and they double charged me for it. So anyways, word of warning, um, you know, order from them at your own risk. It does appear that they are kind of sketchy, uh, but you know, it's really tempting because their prices are so incredibly cheap, cheaper than Amazon. The next item that sold is this absolutely stunning Tahari kind of blazer coat. Um, and this is actually Ellie Tahari, which is the expensive line, not the line that you see at, you know, TJ Maxx. This is so incredibly soft. It was a cashmere, I think Angora wool blend. I don't know why this, this also I had had for a really long time. I don't know why it took so long to sell. I thought, I guess, again, I probably had it priced too high. It sold for $35 with discounted shipping. I had paid $6 for this. So after posh fees, the discounted shipping and my cost of goods, that made my profit $22. You know, even though sometimes I end up taking a lower amount or selling an item for a lower amount than I expected it to, you know, I'm still happy with a $22 profit on this. That's, that's just fine. And sometimes you just have to manage your expectations and move sale items out and uh, really take what you can get for them because Items are really only worth what someone is willing to pay for them. If you are having slow sales or stale items, I highly recommend going through and sending out as many, you know, higher percentage off offers as you can to get things moving. It always really helps kind of ignite and get momentum in my closet and, uh, you know, make room for new inventory. So this is kind of a fun bundle of two shirts. They are vintage, either 1970s or 1960s, kind of Western Montgomery, Ro <laughs> Montgomery Ward, I'm tongue tied, uh, dress shirts. And I picked these up knowing that I probably wouldn't make a ton of money on them, but I just thought they were so fun. I couldn't, I just couldn't leave them behind. They were $6 each. I was just gonna get this buttoned all up. And they look pretty much uh, brand new. They still have these little plastic things under the collar to keep, you know, the collar nice. Why is this not working the way I want it to? There we go. But like I said, they were just so much fun. And I thought they could be worn by men or women. They just had these fun, funky floral prints and the, you know, kind of retro Western styling. These ended up selling for $45 for the bundle. The buyer did get almost 50% off of what I had listed them for. They hadn't been listed a super, super long time, maybe four months or something but I really hadn't had any offers on them. And since this buyer wanted to buy both, that made me, you know, more motivated to accept the offer. Like I said, I'd paid $6 each, so a total of $12. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $24. Nothing super exciting for a $12 investment, uh, but I did, I did recognize that I may not make a huge 
profit on these because they also were a very small men's size. So, it, you know, I figured it may be difficult to kind of find the right buyer for these. Okay, another very stale item, and I'm so happy that this is gone. It is this um, tie-dye print Rails sweatshirt. I bought this just because it was Rails, and I had heard other resellers talk about this brand. And I swear, I've had this listed two or three years, and it hadn't sold. So I think maybe I bought it you know, as Rails was starting to show up at TJ Maxx. And really, they are known more for their button-up shirts or, you know, flannel-type shirts. So this just was not a good buy. It sold for $17 with discounted shipping. I would paid about $4 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $7.58. Kind of dismal, but I am happy to see it go. Okay, and the last item that sold is this Dekine backpack. I picked this up at a fill the bag sale just because I liked the uh, pattern and I thought that it might, you know, have a decent resale value, but it didn't really have a huge resale value. Um, it sold for $18 with discounted shipping. I paid $1.50 for it, so that made my profit $11. Again, happy to see it go. This, like I said, this turned out to be a really great week. My total sales were $1,628. I'm thrilled with that. My total cost of goods was $166.50, and my total profit was $1,120.56. Yes, yes, I exceeded my $1,000 profit goal per week. I always am striving for that, and it makes me really happy when I do. Of course, fourth quarter and first quarter are typically my very best quarters, uh, but still makes me happy to you know, exceed my goals. If you guys are enjoying this type of video, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you'd check out some of my other videos, if you haven't already, uh, the more watch time I get and clicks that I get on my videos, uh, you know, the more YouTube will help my channel grow and uh, it encourages me. So thank you so much. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful holiday season and I will see you next week.